In part one of my story, has my Crohn's disease returned? I thought I was on the path to recovery, but when the doctor prescribed Flagyl, a drug that I considered one of the worst possible options, begrudgingly, I decided to follow the doctor's recommendation and take the drug. However, what followed was an unforeseen discovery about my health that would change everything. So I basically was, went home with Flagyl, which is I consider one of the worst drugs possible. When I had Crohn's disease, I was on Flagyl for uh, a month or two and it really trashed my gastrointestinal system. And Leviquin, and it turns out Leviquin is a drug used in bubonic plague. So it's very strong. So I said, well, what can I do to take these? You know, how can I cope with my gastrointestinal system? And he goes, well, just uh, eat small bites of food. And I go, yeah, I think I'll, I'll take some ginger tea. And he said, oh, that will be fine. I, I took my drugs in the morning and in, at lunchtime. And I took them with meals because that was the only way I was going to get down. I was sipping ginger tea all the time. And then instead of my last dose, I actually took the best probiotics I could possibly find. And so I, and it is safe to take probiotics with antibiotics, but you should do them uh, I believe some people say two hours apart. I think about four hours apart. Otherwise, the antibiotics will just kill the probiotics. So that's how I made it through a month by uh, by taking Flagyl and Leviquin in the morning and lunch, sipping ginger tea and taking the best probiotics I could find in, in the evening. About a month later, I went off the antibiotics. I felt pretty good. Yay, I'm off the antibiotics. They, they reduced my... Uh, appendicitis, hey, great. And then three days later, I started having abdominal pain again. And that night, I vomited between 50 and 100 times. It was terrible. And uh, it was just little bits of vomiting. I cleaned out with vomiting. It was just never ending. And so, in the morning, I went back to the emergency room but I noticed that there was a, a, a sheriff, a big burly sheriff, two rooms away from me. And I asked my nurse, I said, uh, what's the sheriff doing? Oh, there's a San Quentin inmate um, next to you. And don't worry, he's always uh, in a handcuff and there's always a uh, sheriff outside his door. And periodically I could hear him yell, Stephen! Stephen! That was the name of his nurse. So anyway, uh, then one day I went out because I was supposed to get some exercise. I went out to take a walk with my IV pole, walking along. There was no guard. <laughs> and I go, well, where's the guard? Where's the guard? <laughs> and, uh, and the nurse came in and said, he said, um, well, there was a change of shift. And so you periodically without... Uh, a guard, but it was only about five or 10 minutes, he said. He said, but don't worry, this is a nonviolent offender. He said the real offenders go to a hospital jail in Southern California. So the real bad boys go to a special hospital jail, but for the nonviolent offenders, they get to be in the regular hospital, just like the rest of us. And at the end, it was wheeled into the uh, colonoscopy procedure nurse anesthesiologist and, and the anesthesiologist basically were kind of chatting, you know, this is what we do, you know, we're going to put you out, do the colonoscopy. And then they said, well, what do you do? And I said, acupuncture and herbs. And to my surprise, the anesthesiologist said, oh, that's really great. He said, I was studying martial arts and my master said I should study Chinese medicine before going into Western medicine. And I said, wow, that's just really great. So we talked about, you know, the benefits of Chinese medicine. But then I heard one of the most amazing stories of my life. The nurse anesthesiologist piped in and she said, oh, yeah, yeah, my mom was diagnosed with, with breast cancer. This is like 40 years ago, she says. And, um, and she had two young children, including me. And uh, the doctor said, you know, we're going to do chemotherapy, but you need to get your, you know, your affairs in order. 
she said, the mom said, affairs in order. I'm too busy. I'm too busy. I've got two young daughters to take care of and I'm going to take care of them. And I'm going to outlive you, Mr. Chemotherapist. And you know what? She did. <laughs> she outlived the chemotherapist. So then she, then she, the last thing she said to me is, you know, we've got a really good anesthesia uh, option here. He goes, it's called Propolo. And, um, and she goes, you know, there's just one problem. I go, what's that? Well, the euphoria la uh, only lasts about a half hour after your operation. And I was going, oh, bummy. Well, I left the operation. That drug lasted five hours. I was totally happy. I got out of the hospital. I was the happiest guy on the planet. I even went out for pizza. <laughs> and it, I, I was just so happy. You know, the doctors were going to get to the bottom of what was wrong. I was on the road to healing. I put on some Beatles songs. And then this Carpenter song came in my, my, my ears, this song about the birds on the telephone line. So I listened to a couple Carpenter songs and I felt like really goofy and really happy. I was just so happy to be home. But a week later, you know it's a bad sign. When you get a call from the doctor and the doctor says, yeah, please call me. So I call my gastroenterologist and he said, uh, we believe you, you have a tumor and we believe, we're not sure, but we believe it's cancerous and we won't know for about a week or two. And I go, oh no, <laughs> oh no. I, you know, it's all along I was thinking this is an exacerbation of Crohn's disease. I really didn't fully think that it was, there's a tumor in my test. And he goes, and I made a preliminary call with a, a surgeon uh, affiliated with, uh, with the hospital, uh, the teaching hospital. And, uh, and uh, that individual will be calling you or your staff will be calling you for, for surgery. I was not expecting this. I sat on my steps and reflected on everything that had happened. My experience with Flagyl and the subsequent tumor diagnosis was a wake-up call. This story demonstrates the power of complementary medicine. Sipping ginger tea and taking probiotics, apart from antibiotics, really saved my digestion. As we know, antibiotics can play havoc on the intestines. Hearing an inspiring natural cure story before my colonoscopy by the nurse uplifted me, and it gave me the sense that I was on the right path. Overall, this experience taught me to be more proactive and informed about my health, to seek out multiple opinions and options, and to always trust my gut instincts when it comes to making important health decisions. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please comment below and be sure to like and subscribe to help us grow our channel. Thanks for joining us 